So this video is all about how we make decisions. I dyed my hair and people asked how we all agreed to do that. How do systems make choices about appearance as well as things in general? Well, hopefully you guys are about to find out. Hi, this is Jess and you're watching Multiplicity and Me, a channel dedicated to ending stigma on DID. Our hair colour sparked a lot of interest into how DID systems make decisions. So I figured this will be a great opportunity to discuss that. We will share with you guys our experiences and some scenarios. Something as simple as making a decision to dye our hair would usually take time and effort. Ideally, each system member would be asked how they feel and what they think about it. If there is genuine hesitation about a decision, then generally we won't go ahead with whatever it is that we plan to do. We want to ensure as best as possible that all system members are happy, or as happy as they can be. And that's a good rule of thumb to have. If you check in with each member and allow them to be heard, and hear their views too, you're going to have a lot less friction and that'll help form trust between each part. A great example of this is with my diagnostician. I mean, we've been offered many documentaries over the years, not just the three that you guys have seen. But when my diagnostician sort of checked in with the boys to see, you know, how they all felt about doing whatever documentary it was that we were doing, Ed has often been the one to decline and not want us to be involved at all. So all the decisions are weighed up, really. So it's like, you know, Jake's choice to do something that he really loves and enjoys versus Ed's hesitance and the potential impact that it could have on his mental health. So obviously in that situation, even with four out of five members of our system agreeing that yeah, that's cool and we can go ahead with that, because of the potential effect it could have on Ed, we all declined because our mental health would come first. Because I'm co-conscious with the main frontiers of my system, it would be much easier for us to have a discussion about the decisions that we plan to make. But with some systems with higher intra-amnesia, this isn't really viable or possible. As you can imagine, checking in with each part takes time. You may not hear from them for weeks and weeks unless drawn out by a professional. So this method can be tricky. And although we are a small system of mainly five, there are systems who are much larger, which would definitely add to this difficulty. So if you're a large polyfront, if you're a large polyfragmented system with lots of amnesia, this technique really isn't an option. So instead there can be a shortcut. So for whatever reason I turned out to be the lead decision maker in the system. I've always put down to the fact that I'm the named alter in this body. You know, I was called Jess and therefore I grew up as Jess. Um, but no, it doesn't always work like that. But Jamie is our number two and often makes the tougher choices that I can't bring myself to make or I don't want to be involved in. And sometimes it's simply me and him that will make decisions between us. So we'll often speak about the impact of the system members between us before making our final choice. There have even been times where Jamie has overridden my choices because he's felt that, um, you know, I'm struggling and actually, you know, he used to use his head more than my heart for whatever reason. And so therefore, many systems will just check in with a gatekeeper or a system head. That will generally have a very good view of everyone in the system, like a good overview. And they may even be the best kind of person to deliver, like say, bad news or difficult news or to calm other authors down in the system if they're not too happy with the outcome. And sometimes you just do it in the hope that there's no repercussions. <laughs> so like I did with my hair. Yes, I made a spontaneous decision and I didn't consult anyone at all. Ed says, I look like a rejected Schwarzkopf advert. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Love you too. We've had blonde hair since I was 16 because it's a safe choice and most of us sort of preferred that colour, kind of felt that it suited the body the most, but I just really felt like I wanted something different. Um, so he says he'll be fixing it soon. So watch this space. Don't know what's gonna happen next. We'll have another consult. We'll be doing exactly this in the next few weeks, I'm sure. <laughs> so there you have it, three ways of making decisions. Number one, checking in with as many parts as possible, although it's very time consuming and maybe unachievable altogether. Number two, checking in with a gatekeeper or system overlord-ish who will act in everyone's best interests. Or number three, just do it and hope you get no sassy clap back from somebody who thinks that they know best. But seriously, I wouldn't recommend that at all as it actually can cause some systems to sort of destabilize, distrust one another again. And many years ago, I, it, doing this, no doubt, would have caused an absolute uproar. So I'm very lucky. So that's a big oops on my part. And um, that's definitely not something that I do often. So I hope that answers your questions about how alters and systems make decisions. Lesson to be learned, don't be like me and be spontaneous because that's a no-go. <laughs> And if this has helped you become more educated, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as well as check out the Multiplicity and Us playlist linked in the description below. And as always, thank you ever so much guys. Take care. Bye.